Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. This week, we're playing Lord of the Rings Online. Yes, you may have indeed noticed that Lotro, as all the cool kids call it, came to Steam a couple of weeks ago, and if you've been intrigued but haven't quite wanted to download that 14 gigs to test it out, maybe I can help to convince you. So if you answer yes to any of the following questions, then Lord of the Rings Online might be for you. Are you a huge fan of J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle-Earth? If so, then yeah, you probably want to give this game a try. Do you really enjoy standard hotkey-based MMOs? Then you probably want to give this game a try. Have you been thinking about dipping your toe into the waters of MMOs, but weren't really sure that something with a monthly fee was quite right for you? Well, in that case, you will definitely want to give this game a try. Are you really bored and in search of your next massive time sink? Well, in that case, you really want to give this game a try. Now, while those are the reasons that you should consider taking a look at Lotro, they're also the reasons that you might not want to. If you really don't care about Middle Earth, or you're not looking to play yet another hotkey-based MMO, then this isn't going to be for you. There are 75 levels to play through, so if you're not looking for a time sink, then this isn't going to be for you. Look, the bottom line when it comes to Lord of the Rings Online is that this is a high-quality, triple-A, absolute polished MMO that is available free-to-play. And this isn't gotcha free-to-play like some MMOs. It is really and truly free. You can level all the way to 75, you get access to all of the basic content of the original game, expansions are extra, some quests are extra, but it really isn't trying to deceive you. There is an absolute massive ton of content available for free players. You will never necessarily feel at a disadvantage because you're not paying money. But this does lead us into the not-so-free part of this free-to-play game, monetization. How do they do it? What's their model? Well, they use Turbine Points, which are common between Dungeons & Dragons Online and Lord of the Rings Online, and they mostly offer you convenience and cosmetic items. For instance, you can increase your XP rate. You can increase the rate at which you complete deeds. Deeds are these little sort of in-game mini quests that you get. Some of them last a long time, like use X base attack a thousand times. Some of them are short, like kill 30 birds. They give you a little perks and maybe a little trickle of turbine points here and there. You can increase the rate at which you actually achieve those. You can also buy mounts and cosmetic armor items. There really is a lot that's available there if you want to spend a little bit of money. The other major money component is the expansion of the game, whether it be through simple things like expanding the number of character slots you have access to, or more complex things like entire expansions. I believe they have two expansions right now with one more coming. I think it's Mines of Moria. Something about Isengard. I want to say it involves hobbits being taken there, but I'm not sure might want to Google that. And they are coming out with one in the fall, I believe it's the fall, uh, something to do with Rohan. Probably something about riding horses from Rohan. And that one's actually going to introduce mounted combat. That'll be pretty, pretty cool. So that's the two basic things that you get. Convenience and acceleration items and actual expansions of the game. So it's a nice monetization feature. If you do decide to get into it, you can sort of buy what you want piecemeal. And it really is a uh, an interesting way to go. And they do also offer a monthly subscription for 10 bucks a month to get 500 turbine points, as well as access to pretty much everything in the game. I don't know whether that includes expansions or not. If you like this game well enough to actually subscribe to it, you should probably do that research on your own before putting that money forth. So that's pretty much the ins and outs, the details of this game as it is relating to spending money or not spending money. 
If you want to know my thoughts on the game, well, I think it's pretty damn good. It definitely is a fully polished MMO. I mean, these guys were trying to compete with World of Warcraft when they first came out. They were trying to appeal to fans of uh, Hobbit and uh, the Lord of the Rings series, of course, and they really were going all out on it. There is limited voice acting in the game, but when it's there, it's nice and enhances quests and things like that. Uh, all in all, the questing is uh, the sort of typical MMO questing that you would expect. It is dull in places, painfully dull in places, but little things like the deeds do help to spice it up. I do have to say that one of the biggest selling points for this game, even though I'm not a major fan of Lord of the Rings, is seeing those characters that actually participated in the game. The events of this game are unfolding in parallel to the events of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and so you'll actually see things happen. For instance, if you start as a hobbit, you will actually encounter Sam and Frodo and Pippin on the road. You will also see them running away from a ring wraith. And I have to tell you, I kind of shat my pants when that wraith came up because it really... It related back to the movies and to the experience of the books, and I understood what that character was and what it meant and how easily it could have just simply waved its hand and dispatched me from this Earth or this Middle Earth. And it really, really did give me that sort of uh, fan moment, that sort of geeky squeal kind of moment, and it was really, really nice. So even casual fans who've only seen the movies will recognize a lot of locations, will recognize a lot of folks, will recognize a lot of abilities and sort of actions that happen. For instance, one thing I noticed on the Hunter is the Hunter has a very Legolas-type move where you are at close range, you stab someone in the throat with your arrow, then you step back and you actually fire that arrow right into them, a la one of the moves that was used in the movie by him several times. So. It really does have that sort of fangasm effect, and if you are a fan, definitely give this game a try. Like I said, as nothing more than a casual fan of uh, the Lord of the Rings stuff, even I found myself getting quite engrossed into the uh, storyline, into the action, trying to figure out exactly at this point where am I in the in the moving uh, in the movement of the story of Lord of the Rings. So I think you pretty much get the point when it comes to Lord of the Rings online. You either want to play it or you don't at this point. And that is all I'm really here to do. Just try to give you a little bit of information about the game and inspire you to maybe try it or confirm the fact that you have no interest in it whatsoever. So let's move on to the other happenings in the world of Big Dave. So I hope you all enjoyed my Level Up 2011 Try It miniseries that I did this week. Three demos we played, three enjoyable games, but don't stop there. There are other games that are out there and available as part of the Level Up promotion. Actually, one is already out as a full game. That would be Splice. Splice is coming to you from Cypher Prime. These are the guys who actually made Auditorium. You might know them from the recent Kickstarter where they kickstarted Auditorium 2 successfully. But this game looks great. I haven't played the demo yet. I have downloaded it. I am anxiously awaiting the opportunity to sit down with it and devote some time to it. I had considered playing it as part of Try It, but in the end I just decided to go with a few simpler looking games, if you will, and I'm saving Splice for my own personal pleasure. I'd also suggest you take a look at a game called Militant, with ant, like the a, because it's ants, so it's Militant. Um, yeah, right. So, uh, Militant. It is a uh, side-scrolling shooter. It's an interesting-looking game. You're basically an ant who is defending your colony from an onslaught of other bugs. It's kind of like, what if A Bug's Life was a 2D shooter? There you go. That's it. I just sold that game to you right there. Well, you can't buy it because it's just a demo as part of the level up, but go ahead and take a look at it anyway. There are several really nice-looking demos on there, and I hope that a lot of those games will see the light of day. And you know, I definitely have to take my hat off and uh, give a massive internet high five to Intel and Valve for putting on this contest. Uh, the fact that Valve got involved in the 2011 version of the contest really meant 
that the contest suddenly took on a whole new dimension. It made it a place where indie developers could really show off their skills and try to, to bridge that gap that so many people have difficulty getting over, that gap to getting your game on Steam. You know, it's not always uh, sunshine and rainbows. It is a, a difficult process at times to actually get onto Steam. You know, just ask the makers of Unepic about uh, the difficulty of getting your game onto Steam and you'll hear quite a story. I also have to say that this 2011 edition of the contest much, much improved over the 2010 edition. In my research, I've found the list of awards for the 2010 edition of the contest, and they were all completely self-serving awards that were promotional Intel pieces, basically. It was things like, best use of Intel Extreme onboard graphics, best utilization of Intel technology. It was just shameless and pretty much uncalled for, in my opinion. Uh, you don't really need to make a game competition that is all about how good people can use your crappy technology, but I digress. Uh, in the end, I'm glad that this exists. I'm glad that the 2010 version existed just so that the 2011 version could exist. Independent game developers out there, as if any listen to me, but if you do, Look forward to the next competition, especially you guys who are aspiring to get your games onto Steam. This is a nice way to get your foot in the door. So what else is going on? Uh, well, Humble Bundle, of course, Humble Bundle blowing away sales records. Uh, of course, it's only got its own records to compete with. I mean, it is the dominant bundle and always will be as long as they keep doing things the way that they have been. And uh, it's just it, it just continued to skyrocket uh, up, 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 well past $3 million. The last time I checked, it's probably over by the time you're listening to this. But man, what a bundle. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that selection because it was sort of a baby's first indie game kind of thing, right? I mean, some of those games definitely not indie, but this was a nice primer. You could say to someone who was uh, newer to the gaming scene, like, hey, get this bundle because Psychonauts, Braid, Super Meat Boy, Amnesia, Bastion, like, these are must-play games from the last two, three, four years. And you really, really need to get your hands on these things, and you need to play them. And and it was great for the masses, and clearly a ass-ton of people bought this, but somebody like me who's purchasing this, if you don't know, when in, in terms of Steam codes, Humble Bundle gives you a Steam code. I can understand logistically why they might do that, but for somebody like me, man, that sucks, right? I have 90% of the games in that bundle, and I end up basically buying the bundle for one game and the soundtracks, and that's basically it, and that really, really sucks. You know, if I purchase another bundle, like, uh, well, another bundle that's going on right now, in fact, Indie Royale, if I purchase another, an Indie Royale, and it has games that I already own, I can share those codes. Now, truth be told, in the FAQ for Indie Royale, they say that you're not supposed to do that, but come on. Come on, right? So I can share those codes for games that I already own, and I do. In fact, I've given away almost every duplicate game I've ever gotten in a bundle to use guys out there on the internet. And I love doing that, and I would have loved to have been able to pass out a copy of Bastion and Amnesia and Braid and Super Meat Boy and Psychonauts to all of the folks who follow me, but because of the way that Humble Bundle does it, you couldn't do that. And I understand that they can't know the games that you own in your personal collection, but they can know the previous games which have been featured in indie bundles already. I mean in Humble Bundles. I don't expect them to peruse all the bundles. Super Meat Boy, Braid, I believe Bastion, I think these have all been in Humble Bundles before. So you're giving me games that, if I'm a loyal customer, actually don't benefit me at all. And that really kind of sucks. But speaking of customer loyalty, as I mentioned, the Indie Royale, they do have a bundle going on right now, but they also recently launched a feature that you might not have noticed. It's called the Collection. If you go to Humble, or excuse me, IndieRoyale.com, and you look in the upper right-hand corner, you will see the collection link. You sign up with the email that you've used to buy your bundles, and it tracks all the bundles that you've ever purchased. Right from one screen, you can click and you can get all of the past keys if you, for instance, never bothered to register a game from your 
uh, New Year's bundle on Steam. Now you can go back and easily get that instead of searching your email for the link and trying to find it and track it down and all that. It's all presented on one page. And they've actually introduced a rewards program. So right now, if you've purchased five bundles, 10 bundles, 15 bundles, etc., I think they've had 16 bundles to date, I want to say, including the one that's on right now. You actually get bonuses. I don't have the bonuses right in front of me right now, but I do know that one of them is Radiant Games Fireball, which is a really promising looking game that I cannot wait to play. But Indie Royale going a long way to differentiate themselves, in this case, actually rewarding your loyalty with free stuff. So definitely head over there, register with the email that you've been using to get your bundles, and check on your collection. You may have a nice surprise waiting for you. So as I said, there is an Indie Royale bundle going on. It's the June Bug bundle, and we're running out of time for this video, but I am going to quickly recap these games in no particular order, save the order that they're arbitrarily listed on. On the Indie Royale website, we have Pixel Junk Eden. If you've never played a Pixel Junk game, really great 2D stuff. These guys put out games. I think it is exclusively on the PlayStation 3. I don't think their stuff makes it over to Xbox 360 but it's always nice when a Pixel Junk game gets over to the PC so that we can enjoy it. You're also going to get Escape Goat, which is making its Desura PC debut in the Indie Royale, a 2D game of some sort. I've only taken a glance at it, but it looks decent, most certainly. Also, Noito Love 2 Devolution. Check that one out. Side-scrolling action shooter. Appears to have some RPG elements. I'm going to be honest, I haven't played it yet, so I don't really know a lot about it. But I have heard positive things about that game, and I've got my fingers crossed that it is going to kick ass. And earlier we were speaking about Cypher Prime and their successful Kickstarter for Auditorium 2, as well as their current game Splice. Well, hey, guess what? You can get a chance to play Auditorium the first. And also, if you're willing to spend a little bit more cash, say $7 or more, you can pick up 8-Bit Weapons Bits and Bytes Chiptune album. The album that they usually pair with the Indie Royale is almost always of absolute top quality. So check that out if you've got a little more money to spend. Otherwise, pay the minimum and get four amazing games. And finally, before we close things out, let's announce the winners of our Indie Gala number four giveaway. You will be contacted within 24 hours or so of this video going up via YouTube with the link to your gala if you won. We had five individual commenters across six comments on last week's video, so that means that unfortunately one person cannot win. I really, really hate that. If I could pull another gala out of my asshole, I would. But unfortunately, somebody has to be the one that doesn't actually get a gala. I fed the names into a randomizer and had it pick one out. Normally, getting your name picked from the bunch would be good, but in this case, it means you are the loser. And unfortunately, that loser was the Mr. Matt Yee. So, Matt, I'm really sorry that you didn't make the cut, but let's face it, you and I both know you don't need free giveaways. You got that YouTube money coming in, right, son? Right? Yeah. Well, I was really happy to see that Matt Yee, a.k.a. Impromptu Gaming, actually posted a video for the first time in several weeks. Big thumbs up on that. I saw it pop into my sub box, and I am really happy going to sit down and watch that after I encode this beast right here. All right, guys, this has been Free to Play Friday. You have been watching footage of Lord of the Rings online. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.